just right off the bat, that dude's lankiness, he, he had a straight-up Nate Diaz frame. I can easily say that was one of the most entertaining street fights I've ever seen. I mean, the Waffle House fights, I don't know if you consider those street fights. Those are always good. Epic. Mm-hmm. And then he went like Conor McGregor boxing. He like he like jumped into another <laughs> stance. It was crazy. Dana White, if you're watching this video, uh, I just like to say that personally, I will watch. I will watch it. That's the most Elon Musk thing that I've ever heard. So we might just wait like five years and sign a hundred million dollar deal with Spotify. I think that the players should be mic'd up. Mike Tyson. Everyone's He's probably back. seen the video by now. He's back. He's like the exact type of athlete like I that I'm a fan of. Like this is the catch. This is this is okay. what's gonna make it. This is what's gonna make it the most entertaining fight in fight history. Coming back June first, basketball and football. Closest athlete to Michael Jordan is Tom Brady. This is No Fly Zone with Syracuse University defensive back John Sweetwood and the average prodigy Eli Chandler. Presented by The Average Prodigy Sports Multimedia. Welcome back, everyone, to No Fly Zone with me, Eli, and University of Syracuse. Even to back, John Sweetwood. Today, we discuss the spinning head kick fight in the street. Joe Rogan's signing with Spotify. Fall sports with no fans. Is Mike Tyson going to be coming back? And also the Kentucky cheerleading scandal. So let's get into it. So first, let's just talk about the uh, the street fight between the nerd and the Russian gymnast. The first thing I noticed about this fight was the lankiness of of which, so we're we're going with that this guy's a uh, Russian. Is that we're gonna fact? go? Yeah, we, I think that we, he's a Russian. I think we're gonna go with that. All right. So just right off the bat, that dude's lankiness. He he had a straight up Nate Diaz frame. If, if you look at it, he had a Nate Diaz frame. He had to have seven inches of reach on the other guy he was fighting with no shirt and you could see the punches coming because of the range but when he when he turned around and he threw that that uh spinning back kick i like totally lost my mind and it that that street fight instantly became top five most entertaining street fights i've ever seen it is on the mount rushmore of street street fights from it is on the mount rushmore without a doubt no, I mean, uh, I'm also impressed with the fact that the guy wasn't wearing a shirt, so he's showing off his dad bod, so I got to give him props for that. Do you think he was purposely without a shirt, or do you think he just doesn't have a shirt? I don't know. I mean, I feel like he might have been, like, one of those crackheads that just, like, takes their clothes off randomly, and then he just happened to not be wearing a shirt. Exactly. That's what I think some sort of – he may have been inebriated in some sort of way because – for him to just pick a fight with a guy with that amount of reach on him, he had to be going in there with some, some like, crack energy. Some Yeah, he did. Yeah. But it made I mean, no sense. Yeah. I mean, but then again, he ended up coming back with a chair later in the day. Do you did see that he come back video? with the chair, or did, didn't the other guy come back with the two-by-two like the two two plank? Oh, did he? Yeah, it was the, the other guy came back. Oh, the other guy came back for revenge with like a wooden plank. And I think it actually backfired again. I think we were watching the video and I think, I think the tall guy took the plank back from him and ended up beating him up again. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's, I think that's a Mount Flushmore for him. Uh, that's just unfortunate to be honest. The for sure. For sure. Wise. It was, I can easily say that was one of the most entertaining street fights I've ever seen. That was entertaining. I mean, just, I, I think I'm willing to go, down to top three i can't think of four other saying top five i can't think of four other ones that would beat it no i mean the waffle house fights i don't know if you consider those street fights those are always good epic epic yes but um no i don't know i mean i think also just the fact that they were so different and you got like this country hick in the street then you have like this russian looks halfway proper that just absolutely kills them so i think that added to it yeah yeah it was crazy. Hold the whole situation is crazy. It was crazy. Um, hopefully, we get more on that later. I want to. I want to hear the full story. Hopefully, somebody. Interviews. I mean, with the stuff that's on ESPN these days, they should just put that on one night at eight o'clock. I'm sure the views would be, the ratings would be crazy. What yeah. What do you think the the lines would be on that? Say like, um, tall guy, Nate Nate Diaz, figure guy would have to be favored. He'd have to be like. 
minus three hundred. Yeah, it Some, would something it, like that. It would be it'd be pretty crazy. Or just UFC Fight Night prime time. See, but the concerning thing about the the other guy is he's for sure. I'm gonna categor categorize him as liable to pull a weapon. That's yeah. why you don't fight guys like that because he you could beat him up, but he's liable to pull a knife on you. I agree. Or he's got some of his boys with him. They got guns or knives. Yeah, yeah, something, something. Yeah. He's not, he's not guaranteed to fight fair, as we learned when he came back with the, <laughs> the wooden plank. Yeah. But I don't even know if it would matter because, you know, the Russian turned on him, got the plank, started beating him with it. So it's like. Yeah. Oh, but you're going to, you're going to, the video's going to be seen. So when he, I, the, the, the redneck should have, or whoever the guy, the guy with no shirt should have backed off, ran away immediately upon the, the glasses touch. Because as soon as the guy put his glasses into formation, it was yeah. over. He, it was. Channeled it, he channeled all those kickboxing classes he'd been yeah. taking. Yeah. No, he was calculating it. Because, you see, he touched it with his hand first. He was like, okay, this is the length he is away from me. Then he rears back, spins, and just nails yeah. him in the rib cage. He also, like, he also, like, was in a stance – Mm-hmm. And then he went like Conor McGregor boxing. He like he like jumped into another <laughs> stance. It was crazy. Yeah, it was. That guy's definitely got some experience. Possibly a brown belt, maybe a black. I belt. mean, he has to have something. That the the form on that kick was impeccable. It, it was. that looks a lot easier than it is to do. I've tried doing that on my friends multiple times, and I like I land on my back. Yeah, it's not easy. No, it's not. So. Yeah, um, Dana White, if you're watching this video, uh, I just like to say that personally. I will watch. I will watch it. Uh, might as well just go ahead and give this guy a 10-day contract, all right? Oh, yeah, the, he's electrifying. All right, so now that we're talking about UFC, Joe Rogan signs a mega deal with Spotify. Um, this is pretty crazy for the podcast community. Yeah, so it's – I saw it I, – I believe – it's okay. So coming September 1st, they're going to be available on Spotify. And then coming at the start of the next year, he's going to be, they're solely exclusively going to be on Spotify. So that, that coming next year changes a lot because I would imagine a lot. Well, almost all of Joe Rogan's viewers are not currently using him on Spotify. Right. And of those people, I would say a large amount don't even have Spotify. I don't have Spotify anymore. I have like Apple Music, so I use the podcast. But I listen to Joe Rogan all the time, so mm-hmm. I may be having to get Spotify. But I heard, could it possibly be a hundred million dollars? No, yeah, I have. That's it what I heard right now. It's a, uh, it's a multi-year deal worth a hundred million. That yeah, that's crazy. The money you could get from the podcast going off of this. I'm yeah. sure you saw the, the um, I'm forgetting the name of the show. What is it? Oh, PMT. You know what I'm talking about. No, no, no. Um, the the girls over at Bar School. Oh, yeah. Call her daddy. Call her daddy. Yeah, they were making five hundred thousand for one podcast a week. Yeah, I know. Five hundred thousand for one podcast a week, and then the rest of the week they just got to live great and do whatever they want. And they didn't even come into work. Like, I no, saw- they came into work once a week. I saw this video. Five hundred thousand. Like- yeah, and they don't edit it or anything. They have a producer that literally no. does everything for them. No. They that um so it's it's Alex and Sophia right mm-hmm. yeah Alex and Sophia I think Alex was the one who has since uh, reunited with Barcel so what is Sophia thinking that, I don't know she, there's no way she finds another job willing to pay her five hundred thousand dollars for one day of work a week no way and yeah. They come in one day of work a week. All they do is talk for like an hour and a half, and then they leave. Like, it's, it's crazy, it's insane. I didn't it's actually, crazy. I didn't know that um, that podcasters were making that much money. No, like, neither did I. I can't but even imagine. It's, it's yeah. going up and up. No, yeah. I mean, I know a lot of people listen to them, but like, still though, five hundred k. I mean, Joe Rogan just signed a baseball contract. Yeah, he just signed a baseball contract for speaking. Yeah, I mean, he's granted, like, Joe Rogan is pretty interesting, but I mean, I mean, yeah, he's the best. You can always listen to Joe Rogan. He is. You see Never a bad time. His Elon Musk interview was 
did you watch the recent one? No, who was that with? Oh, the, the most he did, a, he did was... another one with you. Oh, yeah, 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 that's what I watched. Yeah, 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 yeah that was great. Yeah. Explaining the, the kid's name. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that Elon Musk had other kids. I guess he's got other kids. Neither, so. neither did I. Neither did I. I guess nobody cares about the other kids. Yeah. It's pretty funny to think of e- Elon Musk and just a couple baby mamas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I heard that um, he opened a school just for his kids to go to because he said that the education system wasn't good enough. I, that's the most Elon Musk thing that I've ever heard. So yeah, I'm, not uh, surpri- I'm not surprised at all. No, neither am I. Uh, Oh, yeah, we were talking about Joe Rogan. So, yeah, I mean, Joe Rogan, he's just a legend in the UFC and podcast community at this point. Yeah, I guess I got to start funding my – for a Spotify account. I think so. I mean, I I think I already know that Spotify is better than Apple Music too, Mm -hmm. but I still use Apple Music just because I'm too lazy to make the switch. Yeah. But now that's the – that's the – that was the kick I needed to – to make the switch to a yeah, better life. No, I'm a music Spot- consumption. I'm a Spotify premium user, so. Uh, I used to be. In high school, I was. And I, I forget what happened. No, yeah, it's worth it. I mean, I know a lot of my friends have Apple Music, but, like, I'm not a big Apple guy. That, that's a – but that's a, that's a really good move by um, Spotify because they're going to get a lot of new um, users and flow and accounts from it for sure. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people yeah. are dedicated Joe Rogan listeners, and as soon as it's exclusively on Spotify, you're gonna have no choice. Yeah, you're just gonna have to. I wonder how many fans Joe Rogan, like how many weekly. Joe, Rogan, Joe Rogan basically has. monopolizing the podcast industry. I think we need to look into this. Someone needs to look into this. Somebody does. I think I'm. I'm not sure it's it. legal. Maybe we'll just be like a hybrid of Joe Rogan and Pard My Take. I see it. I and we might it. just we might just wait like five years and sign a hundred million dollar deal with Spotify. By then with inflation, we're gonna be signing like the hundred eighty million dollar deal. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. We're definitely gonna be worth more. Yeah. All right, so fall sports with no fans. You are a football player, you play football in the fall. How do you feel about this? How do I feel about this? I mean, I wanna play football and I want there to be college sports more more than anything right now with all this that's been going on I mean the itch to get back out there and play is like going crazy inside I can't can't wait even just to get back with the guys and like run and lift not even the football aspect just the aspect of being with the guys I can't wait for the no fans really sounds like such a shame I was seeing something on ESPN this morning about Ohio State saying that um they're gonna limit their fans from what I think is almost 90,000 to somewhere between 20,000 and like 45,000. And so that's, that's weird because for a game in Syracuse at the carrier dome, we only get about 20,000, I think, or 20 to 30. Mm -hmm. So if they're splitting that in half, there's really not going to be a a lot of people there. So it's going to be very, very different. Yeah. I mean, but I'm excited for sports to be back. I can't wait. No, yeah. So in the Carrier Dome, like with the fans, does like the sound is just like maximized because in oh, the dome. Yeah, yeah. It's it's awesome. It's always crazy loud, especially third downs, big games. I remember one of my friends was telling me he was at um oh la- my freshman year roommate Andre Smith, who ended up winning the Lou Groza Award for the best kicker in the country. He started off as a walk on he was at the award ceremony and he was telling me that um, one of the Clemson players who was also there, I believe it was the D lineman, like Wil- Wilkins or something, mm-hmm. Wilkinson. I think he's on Jets now or something. Or no, that's Quentin Williams. Uh, I don't know who that is, but you get the point. Um, the Clemson player was actually saying, um, telling our kicker, he couldn't believe how loud it was in the dome when they were there. And he's never heard anything like it. And that's pretty cool coming from a Clemson player who plays in front of that legendary crowd every game. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah, it gets it gets really loud. And, I mean, how, how big of, like, um, like, impact does it have having, like, the fans there? Because, like, you always hear people that are like, oh, our fans are the best in the country, and, like, they, they yeah. don't listen to so much. Does it, I mean, 
Oh, huge. I mean, the adrenaline rush you get from the noise and the fans and the students and seeing all the orange um, is crazy. I remember my freshman year, we were up big in a game and the whole crowd was wearing orange and eventually they started like doing the, the wave and the whole stadium was doing it like almost perfectly. And it was like, it was a spectacle. It was giving me chills. It was amazing. Yeah, the energy you can get from the crowd and feed off it is um, immense. So it'll be it'll definitely be different without fans. Yeah, but just or going with off of limited that, fans. Right. Just going off of that though, like I was looking up some stuff, like some stats about like um, how much money the NCAA is going to lose out on, and the NCAA lost out on eight hundred sixty-seven point five million dollars in ticket sales from March Madness. Yeah. And I'm sure millions and millions, hundreds of millions more in all the other aspects, like the TV contracts and stuff. Right. But, like, I don't know how much the NCAA is worth, but that's a ton of money. And if they're yeah. going to continue to lose out on that for, like, the next six months, that's... That's the thing. They can't. They don't really have the option. Like, they can't, like, they can't miss out on... After missing out on basketball season, basically all of basketball season, they can't, they can't go now miss football season that those those two sports help fund all the other sports for all their respective universities so without those i mean the whole collegiate athletics um would just be upside down right if it already isn't right and i think even if you look at like just from a scholarship standpoint football is by far worth the most money than any other sport in college yeah yeah for sure for the fact so the fact that they're going to be missing out on so much money is just kind of absurd. But, I mean, you have to keep into account the health of players and fans. Um, mm-hmm. so, and it's not so just – um yeah, yeah, continue. No, go ahead. Oh, what I was going to say is um, you have the players and you have the fans. But um, deeper than that and probably more concerning is you have the coaches and the support staffs because – they're not in between the ages of 18 and 22, 23. They're grown. Some of them are older. Some of them are, some of them have uh, pre-existing conditions and they have families that they go um, home to every night, uh, every day. So that's where it gets um, concerning too. Cause I'm sure a lot of um, college athletes are in a place where they could probably get the virus and fight off the virus and be all right. But it's, it comes down to um, all the other people who could be um, really negatively affected. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. And I don't know how old like the Syracuse staff is, but I would assume that they're probably like between the ages of like 35 and 60. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, yeah, I'm sure we got some staff members older. I know we have some staff members older than 60, even, even older than 60. So yeah, yeah, but I'm right. sure I know we I know um, Syracuse and um, all the other universities have been laying down plans for how they're gonna make sure um, people are staying safe from the players to the staff to the staff's families. So I'm I'm sure I'm sure they're um, finding adequate ways to handle that. Yeah, for sure. So my take on this is I think that the players should be mic'd up. Or a couple of players should be mic'd up in the game. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that'd be awesome. I'd, the mic'd up videos um, of professional sports on YouTube are like my favorite things to just binge watch. They're hilarious. I don't know. I, I'm just thinking about if you mic'd up some of my friends on the team, and you're not getting in in practice or in the game, you're not getting a lot of um, PG-13 content, you're getting a lot of rated R content, but it would be mm-hmm. some funny stuff, some good stuff. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think it would be funny, but I don't think I would, like, have it be live. Because I think if you oh, have it live, abso- absolutely not. <laughs> there's way too many opportunities for lawsuits. Yeah, oh, it wouldn't last, it wouldn't last one quarter live. One yeah. quarter. Um. But they're, I guess they're also talking about, like, having, like, mannequin-type fans in the stands. Absolutely not. That after, after catching a glimpse of the cardboard fans in Korean baseball, mm-hmm. I, I am the number one supporter against um, mannequin and cardboard fans. They creep me out. They're, they're too creepy. No, yeah, they're creepy. 
They're creepy. And I wonder if they would have, like, speakers attached to them so that, like, they would be making noise during the game. That That's another interesting point. So now, if there are not fans, are you going to now be allowed to pump in some sort of crowd noise? They're, it, they'll probably let you pump in crowd noise to a certain extent, but you know some teams will be over it and there will be some drama. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, because then they have to make, like, guidelines for when you can and when you can't. Yeah, you know the you know the Atlanta Falcons will be will be pushing that limit all the way, all right? Peters. And the Seahawks, the and Seahawks, the, oh, yeah, the Seahawks fans outside of the stadium yelling with megaphones. Yeah, twelfth man. <laughs> no, they'll have that section that like all dresses up as literal Seahawks outside of the stadium. Yeah, yeah, that's creepy. That's creepy. Yeah, it for sure is. So, Mike Tyson. Everyone's He's probably back. seen the video by now. He's back. He's back. Um, there's a lot of controversy asking if he's going to be getting involved in another fight or not. Um, I say, yeah, bring him back. Throw him in there. We, we all want to see it. I've, we've, I've talked to you about this before, but I would say Mike Tyson is probably my favorite athlete that I never got to watch perform in his prime. So I've grown up loving Mike Tyson as an athlete but only knowing him from YouTube videos and HBO documentaries and specials and stuff like that. And so I've always known he was just like the baddest, the coolest. And like, he's like the exact type of athlete, like I, that I'm a fan of. Like, I love like, I love like the mean gritty, like trash talkers. It's one of the Mm -hmm. reasons I love Conor McGregor is because of the show he can put on before a fight. If you, if you brought Mike Tyson back, I'm sure you would bring all that back. He said his, he said his ego was re, uh, reignited. Oh. He said his ego was reignited. So I'm sure that'll make for some great content. Yeah, I mean, I just feel bad for anybody in the boxing community right now that may have to fight Mike Tyson. I, I feel, feel like he's like – go ahead. Well, what, well, what were you going to say? I was just going to say I feel like that his, if his ego's back, that he's just going to, like, refuse to lose. It, that exactly the ego being back is a scary thing because according to what i've heard and just the stuff i've seen is that he he did have a drop off at the end of his career where he wasn't mm-hmm. demolishing guys he was being beaten by guys that you theoretically would have thought mike tyson would easily handle so it'll be interesting to see when he comes back if he looks like young mike tyson who's going in and demolishing people regardless of who he's in there against or if he's the Mike Tyson in there who's struggling, who's not the violent fighter that, like, people know Mike Tyson to be. Right. And, like, for me, the way I'm thinking about it is, like, I'm kind of going both ways as to does he have nothing to lose or does he have everything to lose? Because, like, he's obviously had a legendary career, but at the same time, he's older now. He's not in the same physical shape. So, like, if he, he lost, he can have he's almost Yeah. Him. He's almost – not. I would say he's almost – has a lot to lose because in terms of our generation you would say people think of mike tyson as a straight badass right yeah a scary dude i would put him if you ask me who the best boxers are of all time i would say something like muhammad ali mike tyson floyd mayweather some something like that so if but if but if i watched um a 55 year old or however old he is mike tyson go out there and get his ass kicked by some other fighter who's not under 30 he's not gonna fight yeah. like some kid in their prime he's gonna fight someone who he's got a chance against i guess i don't, I think he's got something to lose i would feel i would hate to see mike tyson go out there and not live up to my expectations of mike tyson no yeah i agree who is that um that fighter that won not too long ago he won like a prime time fight he was like kind of like had like a gut on him like looked super out of shape um Tyson Fury. Yeah, Tyson Fury. Like, even, like, him versus – Mike Tyson versus Tyson Fury. That's the Tyson The problem Tyson. with that is I think Tyson Fury is, like, 6'5". Oh, is it? Yeah, and I think Mike Tyson's like, 5'9". How about, how about Mike Tyson, Floyd Mayweather? No, 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 no. I'm sorry. No, no. Not Floyd Mayweather. Mistake. Cut that. Mike – how about Mike Tyson – Mm-hmm. versus Conor McGregor boxing rules 
and and we're gonna we're gonna lower but listen this is the catch this is this is what's gonna make it this is what's gonna make it the most entertaining fight in fight history we're gonna we're gonna take the rounds down all the way what what's a boxing match is it 18 yeah i think it's like 18 we're gonna take you from 18 and we're gonna go we're gonna make it a a six round boxing match so we're gonna let them go. We're gonna let them go in there and just exhaust themselves for six rounds. Throw everything they have because we both know Conor McGregor and Mike Tyson. Neither of them are making eighteen rounds. I have one. I have another clause I want to include in this fight. The, okay. Whatever promotion company is watching this and who's making the fight, um, no drug testing <laughs> at all. If you're gonna put Mike Tyson back in the ring on prime time, I want, I want the full Mike Tyson experience. I want him to take whatever he's got to take to look like Mike Tyson, to talk like Mike Tyson. I mean, let him do whatever. That's how we will get the best fight. Yeah, I love it. And I think that you know he will. Because if he really wants to win, as bad as he's talking about, especially against somebody like Conor McGregor, which you know Conor McGregor is going to be talking oh, like for forever sure. before the fight. Yeah, so yeah. it's like you have two of the biggest egos ever in fight history. Conor McGregor, he's not too great of a boxer, but he doesn't care. He'll do whatever it takes to get that money. So I, I disagree with you. I think Conor McGregor is a great boxer, but continue. You do? I just have to – yeah, I have to rip. I have to stand McGregor. I think he's a good boxer, but then whenever you compare him to him in the UFC, it's like – He's just more – he's just way more electrifying in the octagon. Yeah, I agree. And plus, in the UFC, he's not really like a wrestler anyway. Like, that's not his strong suit. Yeah, I know. He's like, a, he's like a kickboxer. Right. So, yeah. Um, no, yeah. But, I mean, Mike Tyson and Conor McGregor, that would definitely be a moneymaker. That would be a legendary fight, I, I would have to say. But, yeah, I mean, if there's no drug testing, that would just be – Epic. It would be epic. It would definitely epic. be epic. Or you just give them, like, a set of drugs that they're allowed to take. That's another one. That's another one. Yeah, that would work, too. You give them some supplements, each of them mm-hmm. a list, and mm-hmm. you say you have to take these for your six week camp, and then yeah. we're throw- we're throwing you in there for not not even six rounds. We're gonna throw you in there for five rounds, and you guys just have to go ape, you guys. Or are we gonna give them like certain amounts that they are only allowed to take, or can they take as much as they want to? No, they can take as much as they want to. I'm I'm all for it. I'm all for it. I I is- want the full. Mike Tyson experience, and I'm not going to get that with a 50 or five, 55 year old man off of no steroids. I'm just that's how I see it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, I think he could possibly. He, I don't think he could be Conor McGregor without steroids, but he could be somebody without steroids, just in the shape he's in right now. I guarantee. Oh, that. for sure, for sure. I, I mean, he's still Mike Tyson. You see him hitting the bags. If you put him out there against anyone with some sort of a lack of boxing experience, he will kill them for sure. Right. Like kill them. He will kill them. Yeah, I agree. So um, we'll discuss that later once, uh, once it actually gets scheduled, but the Kentucky, it, it, but, it, but it is, it is happening. It is happening. So yeah, you heard it here get first men- on no get, flies. Get zone. mentally it's prepared. Happening. It's happening. Yeah. I, we've, I know. Oh wait, no, I have another question. Is it going to be pay-per-view or is it just going to be, yeah, that's too good of a fight to not be pay per view. If I have to watch Justin Gaethje and Tony Ferguson for forty dollars, then I'm I'll pay eighty to watch Mike Tyson and Conor McGregor. Yeah, no, I definitely pay eighty too. All right, so coming back June first, basketball and football. But yeah, June first, that's pretty soon. I mean, they've been talking to us all along, Syracuse football, about mm-hmm. trying to come back around um, June first. So. I hope he can go as soon as we can. I'm excited. I can't wait to get back with the boys. Should be fun. Should be fun. I can't wait. Yeah, so is your schedule still the same for this season, or have they, like, edited it yet? Not yet has the schedule been changed, but um, I don't know the specifics of how the um, off season and the camp has changed, but it for sure has changed, and it will not be a normal summer when we go back for, for any team in the country. Things, things, yeah. things will be a lot different. I wouldn't assume so. And the other thing is, are they – I wonder if they're going to do, like, how they're going to do with the NBA, where they're going to do, like, testing 
like every two weeks or yeah so? yeah i mean they're gonna they're gonna test us a lot for sure and but they're also because tests are not just available in that sense where they could just test 85 kids three times a day um i know mm-hmm. they're gonna be teams all around the country are gonna be um monitoring temperatures daily after morning middle of the day afternoon stuff like that but yeah no i i can't i can't wait to get back i mean we all need sports college sports are great college football is great it's going to be amazing can't wait yeah yeah it, it really wouldn't be a fall if we didn't have college football it just it really wouldn't no i mean i mean the country would go crazy yeah i mean for sure and um the nba i guess is coming back too pretty soon yeah, you know, you know LeBron's at the, you know LeBron's the one on the phone every day, like telling, telling, telling each captain of every team, like, hey, like if you don't back me up on returning this season, like I'm not helping you out. I'm not like yeah. you're like you're you're on my you're on my he's he's after watching the the fin- the last dance, he's gonna take a page out of Jordan's book, and he's uh-huh. just gonna have a list. And anyone who goes against him in um, continuing this NBA season is just yeah. on LeBron's list. And they're just going to start mysteriously dying. <laughs> yeah. They're going to start mysteriously dying if they oppose um, LeBron's desire for this next ring. No, yeah, I agree. And I feel like also, I feel like the Lakers are kind of like a real life Flint Tropics. It's like LeBron owns the team. He's the coach. He's also That's, a player of the I team. I haven't thought of it in that way for sure. Yeah. You know, so, you know what I, I was thinking? Yeah, wait, go on. But I was just going to say that, like, if LeBron wants to start practicing, then the Lakers are going to be starting practice. Yeah. Pretty yeah. Soon. But I think it's pretty funny, though. I don't know why. I just see this happening. I see the NBA season coming back. Maybe they go into some sort of playoff because I can't see them making, like, the Minnesota Timberwolves or, like, the Golden State Warriors come back and play. Like, why would those guys ever – come back and play right now like there's they have literally no incentive to no point yeah. only negative they can only harm themselves or their families or someone else there's no incentive for that I'm, mm-hmm. I'm telling you this is what's going to happen this is what is going to happen mm-hmm. the nba season is going to come back the western conference finals is going to end up being clippers lakers I don't know. Well, it can not match whoa, up that whoa, way. Whoa, 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 whoa. You really? This is what's going to happen. It's okay. Gonna, in some way, shape, or form, the Clippers are going to make it to the NBA Finals over the Los Angeles Lakers, and it's going to be really ironic because LeBron is going to be the only reason the season continued, and Kawhi is going to get their ring out of it. That would be act. That would be hilariously ironic. It's like LeBron gets inspired by the Last Dance and is like, "I need to one up Jordan so bad." <laughs> I need, yeah, I need my and ring then, this year. So then he pulls some strings, ends up getting to the Western Conference Finals, and then Kawhi just outplays him. Kawhi just board mans him. That would and be they absolutely. Win in, and they win in six. And they win in six. I LeBron may retire after the season if that happens. Clippers in six. Western Conference Finals over the Lakers. You heard it here first. All right. Um, but we, we, definitely... we break news here. We break news here. We break news, I'm, yes. I'm giving you guys inside information. I might have to tweet that out this afternoon. <laughs> um, no, yeah, though. The Lakers probably have been practicing. I think they might take Bronny on the Lakers so we can have a, a nice – Father son duo in the finals. It's not a bad idea. He's got a he's probably got a strong young immune system. So when um when Rudy Gobert tries to pull some funny business, <laughs> he'll be all right. Yeah. No one can use a mic, by the way, in this uh, Western Conference finals. No interviews will be allowed, no mics because of uh, the Rudy Gobert situation. Is that is that true? No. No? <laughs> but it, it would I be was like, funny if it was. I mean, if you're Rudy Gobert's teammate, you got to, like, not – especially if you're Donovan Mitchell. If you're Donovan Mitchell, I don't care what anyone says, like, oh, don't hold grudges. Like, I'm holding a grudge against Rudy, Rudy Gobert. Like, you gave yeah. me coronavirus. Yeah. You, like, there's no way to beat around it. Like, 
he gave him Corona. Yeah. You think that they're going to come out with, like, a documentary about, like, all the sports during the Corona, like, 2020? You think LeBron's got an all-access film crew with him throughout this? That would be good content, I'm sure. That would be good content. Actually, it would, like, just 1v1 games with him and Bronny. You think and then, You think like, LeBron, after watching The Last Dance, is going to start running NBA pickup games out of um, the Space Jam set? Um, I wouldn't be surprised. That was – did you see that episode of The Last Dance? Um, no? No. I mean, I've been, like, watching it off and on. I've not really been, like, paying a ton of attention to it. So, basically, Michael Jordan had, like, a state-of-the-art basketball court built at right outside where he was filming Space Jam in Los Angeles in mm-hmm. Hollywood. And he and, – and, he and like, the 15 best players in the NBA would, like, make their way down and play pickup games. And he would – write notes on what he saw about them and how they were playing for the next upcoming season. That is like the most Michael Jordan thing. My, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, you know, Bron's got to be on that now too. He has to. He's got no choice. Yeah, he is. Yeah. LeBron, like, is acting like he doesn't like Jordan. Like, he's just tweeting out stuff about, like, secretly. Like, he's saying things that, like, are alluding to the fact that he doesn't like Jordan, that he's better than Jordan. So LeBron's de- – but, like, secretly LeBron's taking notes of everything that Jordan did, and he's just going to be definitely taking that. Yeah. Yeah. I saw something like J- Jordan is part of the best dynasty, is the lead of the best dynasty of all time. LeBron's never been a part of one. Bro, LeBron is his own dynasty. He's been in, yeah. like, the – he's been in the finals, like, nine years straight. Like, he is the dy- – he's, he's been the constant dynasty with, like, three different teams. Yeah, and I agree with that. But I think in terms of our generation, the closest athlete to Michael Jordan is Tom Brady. Tom Brady. Yeah. Yeah, for Definitely. sure. I don't for care sure. what anybody when I think says. Of, because... Go ahead. Well, when I think of Michael Jordan, I think of, like, that – after watching it especially, I think of, like, he's got, like, the psychopath trait. For sure. Mm-hmm. Like, all he cares about is winning. He's a sociopath. He does not have – he doesn't care about other people's feelings. That is – the two other people in sports, player-wise, Tom Brady. But then I think even more than Tom, I think Bill Belichick it has the same exact mindset as Michael Jordan just as a player because yeah. he's, n- he's not going to beat around the bush. He's going to be mean, he's, and he's going to – but in the end, he's really just trying to win a championship. And at the end of the day – he was trying to bring you along for that too and give you that same experience too. No, yeah, yeah, so I Brady guess. Brady and Belichick I think have that mindset. I think LeBron taking nothing away from him, he's I think he's you obviously can mention him in the same breath as Jordan, but I think and not in a bad way, not to discredit him, but I do not think he carries that same aura to him as maybe Brady and MJ do of being like the the bad guy, like the alpha male wolf. Like, he's mm-hmm. like, I don't know. You, you, you get what I'm saying? I get what you're saying, and I agree with that. But I was just going to say that, like, one thing that Jordan is known to do that Tom Brady is also known to do and that Michael Jordan isn't is the fact that he makes every other player around him better. Yeah, yeah. Because, like, I was, listen- I was watching uh, ESPN this morning, uh, Get Up, and uh, they were talking about how, like, Tom, like the Bucks, they may make it to the Super Bowl this year. And, you know, they have a good defense, and they might not have as good of an offensive game, but Tom Brady's going to do everything in his power to make every player in his team play to the top of their potential. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. And, I mean, we definitely can't say LeBron doesn't do that because LeBron mm-hmm. is known to give his teammates great looks and incorporate them into, um, like, every game. But yeah, yeah. In terms of in terms of the attitude that I learned, I I already knew Michael Jordan had it, but in depth you got to see it through watching the series. The only other people I can think of who are like that, I think of Tom Brady, I think of Bill Belichick, um, and then it's a team sport, so you can't really say golfers. But I think you would have to include someone like Tiger Woods in that conversation too, even though he it's not a team sport. But in terms of that winning mentality, yeah. No, yeah, I agree. And I think, yeah, LeBron's competitive. Obviously, he's competitive. Obviously, he wants to win a lot. But 
there, I think there's almost been too many times where he's made to the finals and he's gotten on like that last point where like it's either you just have to be grittier than the other person and just win the game, and he's just came up short. Yeah, you're gonna have some haters, bro. You're gonna have some haters. I'm gonna be honest. I'm not that big of a talking LeBron about fan. talking about LeBron. Oh no, neither. I mean, like I respect him. I acknowledge him. He's the goat of basketball for my generation. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I don't know. I I don't love him. I mean, yeah, he, I'm a Celtics fan. Yeah, I'm not gonna go that far and say I'm a Celtics fan, but <laughs> he's a good player. Don't get me. I mean, okay, he's a great player. Don't get me wrong, but you can't talk about him in the same way you talk about Michael Jordan because they're just completely different players. Yeah. Yeah. That's. I mean, that's all I'm trying to say because I always hear people like talking Make your about. Make All right. Is, I, is is LeBron in your top five? Uh, top, top five, yes. Top three, no. Who's who's your top three? We we, we can top, end this topic on that. Who who is your top okay? Three? Okay, I'll, my top I'll, three. I'll, I'll give you mine after. Okay, my top three are MJ, Kobe, and Larry Bird. I had to go with Larry Bird. I'm an Indiana guy, so I had to include him. <sighs> nothing, nothing wrong with that at all. You said MJ, LeBron. You said MJ, Kobe, Larry Bird. Yes. I'm gonna go. MJ one. I'm gonna put LeBron at two, just out of respect. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna have to say someone like Kareem. I'm gonna have to say Kareem, third. Yeah, you can raise your eyebrows. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Kareem third, because Kareem. And the reason I put Kareem there, maybe he is not the third best skilled basketball player of all time, mm-hmm. but I look at a lot of these people, who um who people from the older generations try to claim were like great NBA players. And some of them, I look yeah. at them and I'm like, this guy would not be able to score 10 points in an NBA game today. Mm-hmm. But Kareem, I look at and I'm like, okay, he'd be the best center in the league today. For sure. For sure. He yeah. Would. No, but like one last thing I was going to say is I was watching the last dance. Um, the episode that aired Sunday, I was watching it last night and the game back then was so much different than it yeah. is today that like, you can't even compare players back then to today because this is not the same. Exactly. What what really for me stood out about Michael Jordan and put his like skill and greatness, mm-hmm. um, what what made it really clear to me is the fact that he scored sixty six points without a three pointer. Yeah, that's crazy. Like that is crazy. Like no, that's not happening. That wouldn't happen in the NBA today. No way. Yeah, there's no way. You would have to be like Shaq for that to happen to get to put up those type of numbers and it's not going to happen I agree so um I guess that's how we're going to end it right there you cannot compare Michael Jordan and LeBron that's the final statement that's the final statement Conor McGregor versus Mike Tyson is happening get ready Mm -hmm. mentally prepare Clippers um Clippers in six yep over the Um, Lakers yeah, the Russian uh, definitely is going to be uh, on UFC Fight Night. Yeah, if, yeah. If, if you ever, if if you ever come across a situation where you are in a street fight and the person who you are going against clearly has a lanky frame, resembles Nate Diaz in any way possible, mm-hmm. just it's not it's not worth it. It's not worth yeah. it. Might as well just go ahead and hop in your car and leave. Just, just talk things out. Just talk things yeah. out. Yep. Maybe have a dance off. All right. So thank you guys for watching. This is No Fly Zone from The Average Prodigy with me, Eli, and John Sweetwood from Syracuse. We are signing off.